Hey, it's Lynn Brown. Welcome to the Gritty Women Global Podcast, Episode 2, No Grit, No Pearl. I'm a speaker, trainer, and coach with the John Maxwell team, and I'll be honest with you, I am drinking from the fire hose, as they say. Now, I'm not an expert, if that's what you're looking for. I'm more like a work in progress. So let's dive right in. How are we going to get the grit activated in our lives? Last week, we agreed that gratitude is a great place to start. And I've heard from some of you, and way to go. You've actually started the practice of daily gratitude. Well done. I mean, good on you. Now, just do that the rest of your life. Yes, even when the stuff hits the fan. I think it's so interesting how easy it is for us to recall all the bumps in the road, you know, our epic fails or our epic learns, as we like to say, not fails. It's the stories of great struggle that we remember the most, isn't it? But we can't overlook this. So I want you to think with me on this just for a minute. And this is a new space for me, too. I'm, I'm being very transparent here. <laughs> now, I've always liked to think of myself as a positive person. You know, the the glass is always full kind of person. Sometimes I've even said, my glass is overflowing. But about six months ago, a blind spot was revealed to me. And trust me, I did not discover this on my own. And most of the time, we don't discover the blind spots on their own. That's why they're called blind spots. We'll be talking about that later on in another podcast. We don't have time for that today. So my youngest son came home and he said to me, you know, basically he said, I think there's more for me to discover. There's a greater call and purpose on my life. Weeks after that, he joined the Navy and he was accepted into the officer candidate school. And just like that, it's day 10 for him now. But that day, that conversation, it scrambled my eggs, as they say. And I began to question myself, like, like somehow I had failed as a mama that I didn't ask enough questions or I didn't ask the right questions or somehow I didn't lead him in a way that could help him design, you know, his life and know exactly what he wanted. It was just a a different place for me. And finally, I got the courage to jump on one of my mentors call and hit star six to get in the queue to ask my question. And the response I got that day changed everything. It actually changed my awareness and and gave me a new perspective on things. I'm so thankful for the people in my life that stretch me, who don't just agree with me where I am, but they will speak truth into my life. And that day, Paul Martinelli said, you know, you have to harvest the good, harvest the gold. You know, there is good there. He said the awareness that that your son has is such at such a young age. You know, there are a lot of parents who would love to hear those words to look for the good. And as I began to do that, long after that call, I realized, you know, my my older son is is so passionate about his work. He's a lineman. And, and he knew from a very young age that that was the call in his life. It was service to others. And guess what? The same is true for you. You either know your purpose or you're discovering it. And you might be recreating a new one. But wherever you are, be all there. And be you. Harvest the good. You know, we find what we look for. If we assume the worst, we are going to find the worst. So begin to look for these clues. Look for this evidence in your your life, the past and the present, (laughs) because they're there. And begin to be grateful for where you are. You will hear me say this over and over again, but gratitude is the great elixir. Y'all, I am not blowing sunshine here. I'm just simply telling you, that five years ago, I was not doing this. 
And in the last five years, I have done this, and it has become a discipline in my life. And so I created a new learning model of achievement. I didn't know that. I didn't know anything about this five years ago. But I was I was hungry for more or, you know, really just as we say in the South, to shuck it on down to the cob. I had finally gotten to the place that I was ready to change. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. Unlike, unlike my sons, who at such a young age knew that there was more for them. I drifted through the first half of my life. And then I drew a line in the sand, in that gritty sand, and I was committed to fight for my dream. It was that that decision that began to change the results. So to get from where you are, where we are, to where we want to be, change has to happen. And I know nobody likes change, except maybe a newborn baby with a wet diaper. But you know what? A lot of times they scream through that process too. And, and we know that where our energy goes, our mind flows. So if you're not driving, if you're taking notes, just write down a number. On a scale of 1 to 10, rate your mindset. Do you think you have a growth mindset or a fixed mindset? So just write down that number. I will tell you that, that I have been blessed to have a lot of positive people in my life. I mean, I can remember my mom in Chance Hospital as daddy was getting ready to, to head to heaven. She was so thankful for the window. It allowed her to see the sunrise and the birds and the sunset. And days days before Daddy died, he started singing this little song that he had always um, sung to us growing up. And we were all there with him. And he was so animated singing that we started laughing. Like that, you know, that uncontrollable laughter. Like you're laughing, but not, nothing's coming out. And... It's, it's really a cross between the laugh and the cry. And honestly, I think we were probably doing a little bit of both that day. But and not that I'm going to go into any more detail, but I will tell you that there were some people in the room that wet their pants that day. I'm not going to call names, but we laughed so hard. There was another family member in the room that day, totally mortified by the day's events. Y'all don't even know how to be sick. And I thought, I'm not really sure that's the best way to phrase that. I'm not so sure you know how to live. But I didn't say it out loud. I was just thinking it. But my point there was, you know, we have to harvest the good wherever we are. And I know some of you are thinking, Lynn, would you just go ahead and tell us something new that we don't already know? And I, and I wish there was some magic trick, but there's not. And guess what? There is nothing new under the sun. Because we all know what to do. Most of the time, we know what to do. But the easy things to do are also easy not to do. It's better for me not to buy a bag of chocolate chip cookies because I will eat them. But the easy things to do are also easy not to do. So our patterns and our behaviors create our results. And the data does not lie. Pictures don't lie. Leggings don't lie. You can't hide something, you know, with leggings and a big shirt. I mean, it's just the truth, you know? I mean, our results are totally driven by our behavior. So I want you to think back a few years and think about a few successes from your life. And first, you, you maybe some of you are thinking, oh, but I don't have any. But maybe you won the third grade spelling bee, or you made the honor roll, you sold the most Girl Scout cookies, or you hit a home run, you donated your hair to Locks of Love. These are all learning models of achievement. Learning to walk, for goodness sake. You never said, this is too hard. I'm just going to crawl the rest of my life. You got up, and you did it again. So gather the good and keep moving forward. Think about what it is that you really want. Think about that end result. Don't rush through this part. Keep asking yourself these questions and, and write them down and then ask some more because 
you know, oftentimes it's the question behind the questions that we where we begin to see the true answers. So just take some time and, and spend some time here. It will come. I promise you, it will come. I love the story of the pearl. I mean, I think because, you know, it's no grit, no pearl. So, of course, you know, I love I love that word. I love gritty and and I love the word. But, you know, basically a tiny piece of sand enters the mollusk, the oyster, and it's an irritant. Have you ever had an irritant show up in your life? Or even like when you're walking or working out or there's, all, you know, a rock in your shoe or a little a little thorn or whatever, and you try to like move your sock around, move your shoe around rather than stopping and taking care of it. But there's an irritant that shows up. It's an interruption. Life goes sideways. And, and one day you wake up and you think, how did I get here? So the oyster basically begins to accept the sand. The irritant, the sand enters the oyster. And once the oyster begins to accept the sand as part of itself, the pearl begins to form. The worst storms cannot dislodge it hurricanes, whatever. And the process produces the most beautiful, priceless pearl. So maybe there's an irritant in your life that you need to accept instead of fighting against it. Whatever that it is in your life, it had to happen. And you will get to the other side. And that's not anything Lynn Brown has thought up. But the creator of the universe, the one whose image you are made in, if, if he can create an oyster and add sand to the oyster and produce a priceless pearl, there is so much more in store for you. Honestly, it's I believe it's when our backs are up against the wall that we finally gain our balance. When I finally was brave enough to ask for help, was smart enough to know I needed help at least, and I began to create a space that was so far out of my comfort zone, being stretched daily, and I mean daily, I began to listen, and I began to 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 grow, even though it was uncomfortable. And I became interested in the lot in the lives of people making a difference. I truly believe that it wasn't just hearing someone say it, but it was it was me taking the next step and applying these principles in my life. Honestly. I promise you, I do not have it down and I fall down every day, but I grit back up. <laughs> so this is a daily practice. It's not just on January 1st or when the sun's shining. I am seeing extraordinary results in my life as a result of this. I'm not saying th this to impress you, as Les Brown says, but to impress upon you. That if I can change my life, and you can too. I don't really know when, you know, my marginalized and diminished learning models were created. But all I can tell you is, almost to the date, I can tell you when my thought processes and I began to, new, to create the new learning models that have changed the trajectory of my life. I fail forward every day. So I want to encourage you to continue to, to get your grit on. Remember, gritty is the new pretty. No grit, no pearl. G is, is for gratitude. And in a couple of weeks, we're going to be moving on to, to resilience and the importance you know, of, that, of that in our life. So until then, remember this, I believe in you. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.